This is Broadbottom, a small village in Thameside, Greater Manchester. It sits on the River Etherow, which forms the border with Derbyshire. I was driving through the other day after meeting a friend and noticed something strange. The TV antennas point in opposite directions on a lot of houses. Now, don't pretend you don't notice this stuff too. You and I always have our eyes to the rooftops looking at antennas when driving around. Fun fact, I've had 114 accidents to date because of this. I drove the last couple of miles home pondering this and knew I had to do some digging and make a video. So here's the reason why these antennas all face different ways, and it's genius. Winter Hill Transmitter. It's huge. It sits on the hills above Bolton and gives us our television signals. Millions of homes around the area and surrounding counties rely on it daily. Of course it does more than just TV, but we'll keep things simple. This bit at the top is the digital television antenna. Now, the problem we have up here in the north is that we have a lot of hills. It doesn't take much to block the signal from Winter Hill, so we have to rely on dozens of relay stations, and they're all over the place. Some are big, like Oldham. Some are a bit smaller, like Romilly. But they all help to relay the television signal from Winter Hill into the homes lay in the shadows created by the hills. Here at Broadbottom, the houses are either on the hillside, in a Winter Hill black spot, or down in the valley, in an even bigger black spot. They can't see Winter Hill, so they need a relay. This is where Broadbottom Relay comes in. It's hidden down an access road and as low down as you can get in Broadbottom. You can just about make it out here from high above the village. It launched on May 10th 1994, feeding BBC One and BBC Two Northwest, ITV and Channel 4 to residents in the village with a tiny 25 watt transmitter. The relay site sits in a small fenced off area within a water treatment compound. I'm not sure on the configuration of the mast and antenna at the time it was launched, but today we have a small lattice tower with two log periodics on it. The top one sends Freeview channels BBC A, Channel 45, D3 and 4, Channel 42, and BBC B, Channel 39, to the houses in Broadbottom on just 2 watts. The antennas on the relay tower are vertically polarised, and I've created more questions than answers so far. Why is there two antennas on the tower? What does the other one do? Where does the relay get its feed from in the first place, and why are those TV aerials facing opposite directions? Well, the lower log periodic is receiving the television feed, so that the top one can relay it to the homes in Broadbottom, but if we can't see Winter Hill from here, where's this feed coming from? To answer this question, we need to hit the road and leave Broadbottom. On the way out, we'll have a quick look at Broadbottom Viaduct. This amazing structure carries the railway line 137 feet or 42 metres over the River Etherow. It lies just outside the station and is 422 feet 6 inches or 128.78 metres long. Built in 1842, the bridge was made of wood on the top of stone pillars, but less than 20 years after it opened, it was replaced with wrought iron box girders due to deterioration. Three red brick intermediate pillars, of which one is in the river, were built to better support the girders. Anyway, let's head over to our next stop, Glossop Relay. So we're just 2.8 miles to the northeast of Broadbottom Relay now at Glossop Relay. In case you hadn't already guessed, this is the source of the Winter Hill feed to Broadbottom and the reason why the TV aerials over there point in different directions. The homes I showed you all sit on the hillside and have pretty much line of sight to both Broadbottom Relay and Glossop Relay. The homes down in the valley rely more on Broadbottom Relay and can't see Glossop. Winter Hill sends a television feed over to Glossop, which then relays it over to Broadbottom. Genius. 
Of course, this isn't Glossop's only job. It's a relay in its own right, and serves the villages of Glossop and Dinting Vale, and possibly Hadfield and Padfield. Glossop came on the air in 1973, originally feeding BBC One and BBC Two North West and ITV from Winter Hill. Channel 4 was added in September 1984, I can't be certain of the output power. The homes it serves all sit behind a hill that blocks the path from Winter Hill, hence the need for a relay here. As you can see, it's a lot more substantial than Broadbottom, and there's quite a lot going on here, so I'll give you a full tour. From ground level you can see Werneth Low, the hill that causes the issue in Broadbottom, a small view into the Cheshire Plain, the relay over at Romilly that feeds the few houses in Cherry Tree, Fiddler's Ferry Power Station, and Stockport, but not much else, and certainly not Winter Hill. Up in the air, however, we can see right across Manchester and into Cheshire, and that peak over in the distance is Winter Hill. There's two bits to cover on this tour. All of this is mobile phone stuff, so we won't cover it. This huge structure on the top is the UHF cylinder. Some sites, like Oldham, use an array of panels in phase, but inside the cylinder is a cardioid antenna. This is what provides the television signal to the homes it serves. It was updated to its current form when the site was switched from analog to digital on the 4th of November and 2nd of December 2009. It relays BBC A Channel 28, D3 and 4 Channel 25, and BBC B Channel 22 from Winter Hill, but how does the signal get here? These trough antennas face Winter Hill. They receive the signal from there, which is relayed out of the cylinder at the top of the tower. The top one is the oldest, and the bottom one was added in 2022. This replaced a trough identical to the top one. I can't be certain if the top one is still used, but the bottom one certainly is. So let me just recap. Winter Hill sends its television signals over to Glossop. They're then sent out to homes from Glossop, but also to Broadbottom, a really niche relay that serves the houses that can't see Glossop. That's why the TV aerials over there face in different directions. While we're here, we may as well look at the other good stuff that sits on Glossop Relay. Near the top is the DAB radio transmit antenna that sends BBC National Channel 12B and Digital One Channel 11D. This was installed in 2015. As far as I can tell, this is a two-bay antenna that sends both signals simultaneously. This isn't unusual. I spotted this one in New York City last year that sends almost 20 stations from the same antenna. They do this by using huge combiners, but that's another story, so I'll link that video below. Just further down is this two-element Bantu Yagi, which transmits greatest hits radio on 106.4 MHz at 250 watts. At the same level, we have three white stick antennas, which are almost definitely airwave. This is the police's radio system on UHF, and while they tend to use four-stack phase dipole arrays in groups of three, they sometimes use white sticks like this. There's another set near the bottom of the tower. I'm actually working on a video on police radio systems, so stay tuned. Moving below the cellular antennas, on the same level as the troughs we looked at earlier, is this Bantu Yagi. The view from this angle shows a severely damaged reflector. I'm pretty sure this is the high peak radio receive aerial that picked up the feed from Bucksworth, which was then relayed on what is now the Greatest Hits Radio aerial on 106.4 FM. It was bought out by Greatest Hits Radio, and I think the feed now comes in by fibre. If anyone can confirm my theory, then let me know. So that's everything on the tower. These antennas on the buildings are GPS for timing, and in the grounds is this satellite dish, for what could be free sat or reception of other channels, as a backup in case Winter Hill fails. On the way home I have one more stop, and that is Dinting Vale Viaduct. It carries the Glossop line over the valley at the village of Dinting next door to Glossop. It crosses the Glossop Brook and the A57 road between Manchester and Sheffield. The bigger sister to Broadbottom Viaduct, construction started on Dinting Vale Viaduct in 1842 and was completed in 1844. It's 1200 feet or 370 metres long and is 119 feet or 36 metres tall. When it opened it consisted of five laminated wooden arches atop stone piers and then between 1859 and 60, like Broadbottom, the arches were replaced with wrought iron girders. 1918 to 1920 saw seven additional supporting brick pillars added, which ruined the symmetry of the viaduct. I'll leave you with one morbid thought before I sign off. 
One September evening in 1855, a train stopped on top of the viaduct and three passengers, who thought the train was at the station, decided to open the door of the carriage, stepping out into the darkness and falling to their deaths from the top of the viaduct. So, I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into radio and relay geekery. If you want to see more on what radio sites do, there's a playlist in the description, and if you'd like to see more, then let me know in the comments. Thank you.